This is going to be a spiritual court. The Gentile seducing spirit of, quote, the law is done away with. This is an evil Gentile seducing spirit. You see, the Most High Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, scattered us among all the nations, that is, all the Gentiles of the earth. We're going to start off with proving this in Deuteronomy 32 and 26, but there's a multitude and multitude of scriptures that deal with the diaspora or scattering of the Israelites. This is Moses' song in Deuteronomy 32 and 26. I, speaking of the Lord, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, said, I would scatter them, the Israelites, into corners, meaning the four corners of the earth. I would make the remembrance of them, those Israelites, to cease from among men. And this is what has happened. We would lose our heritage and our identity, but the Lord said that he would bring it back to us. So some more precepts to bring this home and run this down as to the Israelites being scattered among the Gentiles and therefore influenced by the Gentiles. Baruch chapter six, verses two to five. This is what the Israelites would see during our captivity. We see this today. Because of the sins which ye have committed before the Most High, ye shall be led away captives into Babylon by Nebuchadnezzar, king of the Babylonians. Now we're in spiritual Babylon, mystery Babylon, the daughter of Babylon, Babylon the Great. Verse 3. So when ye be come unto Babylon, and Babylon the Great today, ye shall remain there many years and for a long season, namely seven generations. Back then it was 70 years. Seven is the number of completion until the generations are completed. We have been in this captivity for quite some time. And after I, the Lord, will bring you away peaceably from this. This happened back from Babylon. We are allowed to go back into Jerusalem under the of Persians to build a temple. Verse 4. Now shall ye see in Babylon, like we see today in Mystery Babylon, Babylon the Great, the daughter of Babylon, ye shall see there gods of silver and of gold and of wood born upon shoulders, which cause the nations, that is the Gentiles and heathen, the rest of them, to fear. Verse 5, Beware, therefore, that ye in no wise be like to strangers, that is, those Gentiles and heathen. Neither be ye and of them. You know, we're not supposed to do what they do. We're not supposed to talk the way they talk. We're not supposed to act the way they act. We're not supposed to adopt their customs and traditions like we do with these holidays that the Europeans, which is Esau, Edom, has established all around the world. When ye see the multitude before them and behind them, worshiping them, you see, and the multitude of them is talking about the multitude of the rest of the Gentiles that are before them and behind them, meaning they follow behind Babylon the Great and worship Babylon the Great. Six, but say ye in your hearts, in your minds, O Lord Yahweh, Hashem Yahweh Shai, we must worship thee, the Lord, not the celebrities, even if they're of our own people, not the so-called white man because he has m money and grants you everything. We're not supposed to worship them. We're supposed to worship the Lord, Yahweh, in the name of his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai Mashiach. We're not done yet. We could go on and on and on with scriptures, but I only have a selection of these. Baruch chapter 2, verse 4. This is our forefather Baruch's confession that was delivered to the temple in Jerusalem to offer prayers and, for, and ask for forgiveness of the Lord Yahweh in our homeland. Moreover, he, Yahweh, Hashem, Yahweh Shai, have delivered them, the Israelites, to be in subjection to all the kingdoms that are round about us, meaning all of those Gentiles, those heathen, to be as a reproach, as a correction. They're going to be a correction to us and a desolation among all the people round about, and we are scattered all around the world today, where the Lord, Yahweh, Hashem Yahweh Shai, hath scattered 
them, the Israelites, us. Us, not the 1948ers. They've been scattered nowhere at any time. Baruch chapter 2, verses 13, verses 29 and 32. Verse 13, let thy wrath turn from us, for we are but a few left among the heathen where thou hast scattered us. Verse 29, if ye, meaning the Israelites, will not hear my voice, the Lord's voice, surely this great multitude of the Israelites shall be turned into a small number among the nations, that is among those Gentiles and heathen, where I, the Lord, will scatter them. Verse 32, and they shall praise me in the land of their captivity, and think upon my name. This is the part where I mentioned that we would, we, the Lord would put the Holy Spirit upon us to repent and to, and to think upon his name and to think about the wickedness of our forefathers and to repent of those wicked ways in the land of our captivities all around the world. Let's get some more. Baruch chapter 3, verses 6 to 10. For thou art the Lord, our power, our God, and thee, O Lord, will we praise. But right now we're praising celebrities of our own people and of the heathen. We worship people who have money. We worship people who have name recognition, so-called celebrity. Verse 7, and for this cause thou hast put thy fear in our hearts, in our minds, to the intent that we should call upon thy name. Don't our people always, when they're in the between a rock and a hard place or having a difficult situation, always crying out to the Lord. But just like it says in Romans 10 and 4, Paul said that he observed that our people had a zeal for the Lord, but not according to knowledge. And this is the knowledge you need. It goes on to say, So the intent that we should call upon thy name and praise thee in our captivity while we're here in our captivity. Not wait till we're rescued, but now. For we have called to mind all the iniquity or sins of our forefathers that sinned before thee. Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity. We're saying this today because we've, we've never gotten out of captivity since we were taken out of the land starting in about 738 B.C. and 580, 586 B.C. in Jerusalem, where thou hast scattered us for a reproach, for a, for a correction, and a curse, and the curse is not just in Deuteronomy 28, they're in Leviticus chapter 26. Again, for a reproach and a curse and to be subject to payments, right? You see in, in uh, Illinois right now, you had the black community have a exponential increase in their property taxes. Why do you think that's happening? Because they're trying to get our people out of those, those properties so that they can move their people in. That's why they're doing it. That's why they do it all around this country. Accordingly to all the iniquities of our fathers, which departed from the Lord, our power, our God. Hear Yisrael, the commandments of life, give ear to understand wisdom, which are those commandments. Verse 10, how happened it, it Israel, that thou art in thine enemy's land, that thou art waxen old in a strange country, that thou art defiled with the dead. The dead are these are twofold. The dead are the spiritual dead of our people, and we're defiled also with the dead of the heathen. See, they're not spiritually aware at all. All right, let's get some more. This is Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. Yahweh Shai teaches about the law. See these commandments. Think not that I am come to destroy, that is to, to deprive of force, to know or discard the law. And law, the law speaking here is the law or rule producing a state approved of most high. What is that? His laws, statute, commandments, and in the faith of Moshe Yahushai. Or the prophets. I, and this is Yahushai speaking, am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Fulfill means to make it happen. The things were written of him. And he obeyed the laws in perfection. So let's break this, these words down a little bit more. To further the definition of law, a definition 
and the strong says the name of the more important part the pentateuch the five books first five books is put for the entire collection of sacred books of the old testament and prophets now this is not what your christian pastor your catholic priest or your muslim imam are doing today but these are what this is what the people the true prophets of the lord are doing on the highways and byways and as we're doing right now prophets of men filled with the spirit of the most high who by the most high's authority and command in words of weight pleads the cause of the most high and urges salvation of men how do we urge salvation by bringing you to mind to repent in the faith of Hamashiach Yahweh now to further fulfill. So Christianity would tell you fulfill means that Yahweh Shai, and we're going to get into that, the scripture that they use. They say to Yahweh Shai pinned the laws on the cross and that the laws are done away with when he died, which there's nothing in the scriptures that ever says that. So the word fulfill here, as it is written here in the Strong's, and i.e. means in that to cause the Most High's will as made known in the law to be obeyed as it should be. And the Most High's promises given through the prophets to receive fulfillment. And your pastors are not doing this. Your religious leaders around the world are not doing this. Only the Israelites that the Lord has raised up to do such are doing this. But it's not over yet. We got some more. This is Matthew chapter 24, verse 35. Yahweh Shai tells about the final judgment. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words, my words shall not pass away. You see, so the laws are not done away with because those laws are his words. Mark, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. And in Luke, the third witness of the same, 21 and 33, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Make no mistake, the law, statute, commandments are Yahweh Shemach, words. Now, this is a, another translation of the Bible to try to bring forth a little bit more understanding. The New International Version, the NIV, this is John 10, verses 34 to 38. Yahweh tells about the final judgment. Yahweh answered them, is it not written in your law? I have said, you are gods. If he called them gods to whom the word of the most high came and scripture cannot be set aside, what about the one whom the father set apart as his very own and sent him into the world? Why then do you accuse me of blasphemy before? Because I said, I am the most high son. Do not believe me unless I do the works of my father. But if I do them, even though you do not believe me, believe the works that you may know and understand that the father is in me and I in the father. This is how you know that the father and son are not the same. They're not, it is not the, the God, the father that came down to the earth. It, the father sent the son. Okay. The Father sent the Son. The reason why the Gentiles want you to think and or and or believe, whatever the word you want to use, that the Father came down to die on the cross, which he would never have to, the Father would never have to do that, is because they have the image of the, of the Messiah being their image, the Gentile European image. And, they, and in doing so, you think that they are related to the to the chosen line when they are not. They have they have fooled you. They have tricked and deceived and cheated you out of your inheritance, out of our inheritance. Now, to further, further this again, this is Baruch chapter 4, verse 1. This is the book of the commandments of the Most High and the law that endureth forever. You see, it never ends. All they that keep it shall come to life to spiritual life, to be quickened, to be awakened spiritually, and to later the fulfillment of the promises for a, an eternal body, a mortal body, but such as leave it shall die. 
If you leave the commandments, leave the law, you will die. You will not be spiritually awakened. And it goes to prove this is for whom? Verse 2, turn thee, O Jacob, and take hold of it. Walk in the presence of the light thereof, that thou mayest be illuminated. Give not thine honor to another, not to the Gentile Christian religion, not to the, the fake one they call Jesus, not to him but to Yahweh Shai and the Most High Yahweh. Nor the things that are profitable unto thee, unto a strange or foreign nation or foreign tribe or foreign people. That is anybody outside of the Israelites, the 12 sons of Jacob, the Gentiles and the heathen, the Europeans, the Asians, the Arabs, and the Africans. Those are those strange nations, those foreign tribes and people, okay? And they look like us and look like them. Those that look like us are the tares, the weeds that the Lord is going to use the angels, the messengers of, of the Most High, Yahweh, Bashem, Yahushai, to separate the wheat from the tares, the wheat from the weeds that are among us. Now, this is Romans chapter 2 and verse 14. For when the Gentiles, which have not the law, do by nature the things contained in the law, these, having not the law, are a law unto themselves. Now, the Gentiles here are the Israelites that, are, that don't know who they are or who know who they are, but they're going to continue in the ways of the Gentiles. That's what we're talking about. How do you know that? Because all of the Gentiles today, in 2024 and for since they have have gotten a hold of the Hebrew scriptures have said that the laws are done away with the only people that are saying this would be the unrepentant Israelites that become repentant Israelites those are the ones that would be doing some of the things in the law that by nature the things that are contained in the law and that having not the law in its totality are a law unto themselves now there are some things that the Lord puts in our spirit that are not in the Gentile spirit, not within the European, Asian, Arabs, and African spirit. For instance, we do look upon, uh, favorably upon having our son circumcised. We may not do it on the eighth day, but we have that within our spirit to do. We also have uh, a sense, every one of us really has a sense of right and wrong. We have, we have that, that uh, portion of the spirit that tells us when we're doing something wrong, but some of us will push forward onto evil. And this is how we do end up in sin anyway for all of us. We're all in sin and iniquity. And once we repent, a just man falls seven times. He, he admits that he's, he's sinned and he, he, he goes about repentance. There is no repentance within any of the world religions in Christianity, Islam, or Catholicism because they are not governed by any set of rules whatsoever. They're governed by the precepts of men, but not by the law of the Lord, Yahweh, Hashem, Yahushai. This is Romans chapter 2 and 12. We're going to go back, back up a couple of verses in, in Romans. For as many as have sinned without the law shall also perish without the law. You see, death comes to those who follow the laws or not. And as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. You know, and all of the judgments uh, in violation of the law are not death, but we do know that the wages of sin is death. Starting with spiritual death, meaning you will not be spiritually awakened. And then summarily, it could be the end of your life. And later in the second judgment, it will be burning in the lake of fire. This is Romans chapter 3 and 31. Do we then make void, that is, to cause, to cease, put an end to, do away with, annul, or abolish the law through faith? That's the question. Are we supposed to make do away with the law? The most high forbid, which means no, not least, not the least of it. Yea, we establish, which means to uphold or sustain the authority or force of the law. You see, that's what we're supposed to do. This is the actual little meaning of these words when you look these up in the Strong's. 
So for all of those, for all the Christianity, all the Catholicism, all the Islam, any other world religion of the Gentiles that says the laws are doing with like they do, this corrects them. But we're going to get to the one verse that they use. We're going to get to it. John 6 and 63. These are the words of Yahweh HaMashiach. It is the spirit that quickeneth. Right? That's the spirit that repents. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I, Yahweh speak unto you, they are spirit. Those words are spirit. And those words, and they are life. Verse 64. But there are some of you that believe not, just like you do today. For Yahweh Shai knew from the beginning who they were that believed not, just like he does today. He knows everything. And who should betray him. How do you betray him? By being disobedient, by not following the law, statutes, and commandments in the faith of Moshe Yahweh Shai. 65. And he said, therefore said I unto you that no man can come unto me, Yahweh Shai, except it were given unto him of my father. This is the predestination, okay, the, of the elect. These are the people that the Lord, from the beginning, were going to repent, just like there are people from the beginning, later on, they would not repent, and they're going to be destroyed. But yet again, all of Yisrael shall be saved. All of us Israelites, whether we're good or evil on this earth, will be saved, but you should not take that as a license to sin. This is John 14 and 15, Yahweh Shai speaking. If ye love me and everybody on this planet, these Gentiles say they love him, what does he say do? Keep my commandments. And they keep zero commandments. Romans chapter 10 and 4. For the anointed, this is the, this is the verse that they use to try to say the laws of the way with. Because they look at today's meaning of the word end. For the anointed is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. That word believeth means a strong and welcome conviction or belief that Yahweh Shai is the Messiah. Now, many of the world's uh, Gentiles say this. They, they, they say this with their mouth. Through whom we obtain eternal salvation in the kingdom of the Most High. Who is the kingdom for? The kingdom is for the Israelites. It's not for the Gentiles. Now, this also requires that, because Yahweh Shai is the judge, it requires you to do what he said to do, just like we just saw in uh, John chapter 14 and 15. Now, we're going to further break this down a little bit, a little bit more. So, when we see, it says, for the anointed is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. Now, we're going to look up this word in. We're going to see in in three other scriptures, and we're going to see the definition of the word. Revelation 1 and 8. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. Revelation 21 and 6. And he said unto me, it is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of water of life freely. Revelation 22 and 13. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, and the first and the last. Now, when we look this up, it says the end, that is the last in a succession or series. It says of the Most High, who by his perpetuity survives all things in that, and meaning in eternal. And we see the scripture references above that are here. All right. So it means eternal. So Yahweh Shai, if we were to reread and substitute the word, Revelation 1 and 8, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the eternal, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. And it makes perfect sense okay, in each one of those scriptures. We won't substitute it in the other two, but if you substitute it, you see, if you have spiritual understanding, you have the Holy Spirit with you, you will see that this is true. So it is for well, Yahweh Shai is the eternal of the law for righteousness. Okay. Revelation 22 and 14. Blessed or happy are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life 
and may enter in through the gates into the city. And that is our last verse to sum up this whole issue concerning the Gentile seducing spirit of the law is done away with. I leave you in the most capable hands of the Most High Yahweh, Hashem, Yahweh Shai.